Yeah. Vote with your feet. <laughs> well, what happens when they leave? Then the tax the tax base collapses and the systems fail. And then it'll be it'll be the glider's fault for leaving. It, it's the glider's fault anyway. We've learned to accept this and we don't care anymore. And then more and more people are, are headed that way. Yeah, they're bringing like 100,000 more refugees and migrants in to take their place. Your place, don't worry. And they can I live in the slums water. in New York part too. Yeah, I mean. It, it's going to be Man Manhattan soon. Uh, yeah, salute to um, Deluxe247, the real MVP, coming through. The uh, fifty something night in a row. Salute to you, man. That's just a flaw. There's just a flaw with cash bail fundamentally. A Milwaukee homicide suspect arrested three times by U.S. Marshals posts more than one hundred thousand dollars cash bail, but a Waukesha judge says not so fast. That's our big story at five. One of Wisconsin's most. This is three months ago. This is not. We're going to get into what happened yesterday. This is three months ago. This kid is. Like, he is the poster child for what's going on with the criminal justice system. There are thousands and thousands of this kid across the country. Not so fast. That's our big story at five. One of Wisconsin's most wanted figures, a fugitive, is out of the Milwaukee County Jail again, and somebody ponied up six oh, figures yes. to get him out. But he didn't get very far, at least not yet. Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson live outside the Milwaukee County Jail where phone calls tip prosecutors off to a homicide suspect's plan to flee the state again, right, Brian? Yeah, Ted and Mary, Kenneth Twyman had been here in the Milwaukee County Jail since July 6th. That's when U.S. Marshals had picked him up for the third time in four years. Now, just late last week, someone ponied up more than $100,000 cash to set him free again. But first, he had to take care of a couple of warrants in Waukesha. Where is all this money coming from? If you think higher cash bail is supposed to protect the public from the most dangerous criminal defendants, it has done little to deter Kenneth Twyman. This is some He's videotaping himself doing a drive-by. Live streaming, no, he was live streaming. He live streamed himself doing a drive -by. These With guys, a machine gun. With a machine gun. A switch. Yeah, that was a switch. Yeah, that was a switch. Yeah, yeah. but that's, that's a machine yeah. gun under federal statutes and is uh, illegal yeah, federally. Actually. Yeah, these guys, though, these guys literally, literally have no fucking fear. There's no, that's why I hate, I can't stand this fucking narrative that like black men, as a black man, you know, I'm, I'm a black man, so I gotta watch it. I gotta do twice as hard. I gotta watch my stuff. I gotta, this. Then we saw the other day the story where they were live streaming the police chase. I think where was that? I forgot where that was. That was some city where they were live streaming the police chase of 15 year olds. And now he's he's live streaming drive bys. They're fucking out of control. Little defendants. It has done little to deter Kenneth Twyman. This is someone odd. I have somebody who qualifies for public defender representation, but is literally sitting on $125,000 worth of cash. U.S. Marshals have arrested him three separate times, the most recent on a warrant for homicide. We were hoping that he would stay in there until his trial date. Each time judges set higher cash bail, each time he posts it and disappears. He doesn't just flee and not come back to court. He flees the jurisdiction. He flees the state of Wisconsin. Family members of the man Twyman is accused of killing asked us not to show their faces or use their names. It's very hard for us to deal with. But they were incensed when they heard late last week that someone posted more than $100,000 cash on Twyman's behalf and the Milwaukee County Jail released him again. $100,000 to drug dealers is no money. They have that stash. This guy is a paid, he's a hitman. He's a hitman because these drug dealers keep letting him out. He, I, I'm sure he pays them back by doing hits. Away in the refrigerator in a rubber band. Before Twyman could go free, deputies transferred him to the Waukesha County Jail to settle a pair of warrants. And on Monday, prosecutors revealed that jailhouse phone calls tipped them off to Twyman's intentions of heading to California or Las Vegas. 
planning to flee the state the second he gets out. So Waukesha County Court Commissioner David Herring up the ante again, setting a new bail of $200,000 cash. Why not no bail? Why not no bail? And this is why these judges and district attorneys need to be held accountable. Whenever they release violent felons like this, and if somebody is killed or injured, they need to be held accountable for this. Because and that money, that money that those people put up, when he skips bail, goes to the court. Right. It's yeah, and, it's and surrendered. He, right. And this, once again, you know, um, this goes back to, like I said, this whole system is, is a scam. Because why would you keep giving a person like this bail money and then court costs and then you're using our tax dollars for him to get a defense attorney? It doesn't make any sense. How is this benefiting the victims of the crime? And he's never held accountable. And you know he's going to go back to the streets and do the same thing. Keeping one of Wisconsin's most wanted in jail for now. If he gets out, gets this 200,000, do you think there's any chance he's going to show up for his trial? No, he no. will never. He will never. Now, if you're wondering where Kenneth Twyman got more than $100,000 to get out of the Milwaukee County Jail here, we were wondering the same thing. Coming up on Fox 6 News at 6, we're going to show you where that money came from and why one state lawmaker says this is a prime example of the need for bail reform in Wisconsin outside the Milwaukee County Jail. So that's three months ago when he, um, when he um when he was doing when he was um going through this yeah three months ago he but this is a, the type of person that woman says that um that they want to expunge the records for he's a murderer a cold-blooded murderer yeah and he's probably murdered wisconsin's people. most wanted yeah and this is the type of this is the type of black dude that she um feels most in solidarity with she like uh the black dudes in her class at Georgetown, the black dudes um, at the little lounges she goes to with suit and tie black dudes, the cornball black dudes, she has no no, no kinship with them. It's this right. fucking guy who she feels connected to. Um, Wisconsin's Most Wanted is set to go free again thanks to the generosity of a convicted drug trafficker. Fox so and this is another. Remember, he just got in... in um, August, somebody paid a hundred thousand for him to get out. Out. On uh, one he, thing, he, uh, this is neither here nor there, but I like that dress that she has on. I'm about I to say, shout out nice. to her stylist. Dang. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, but she looked like a black princess Leia. Yeah, she's 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 cool, man. She's you know she's a little long in the tooth, but she's she's hanging on, man. She's hanging on. Um, this is a three months later. Someone's paying another hundred thousand to get this kid out. I'm telling you, he's got to be a fucking hitman. Nobody would pay this. What yeah. are they getting in return for this? Right. They're getting his silence because he could bury every one of them. Just kill him then. If you right. got a hundred thousand to get him out, you got a hundred thousand. Oh, one of dead. these times he will end up dead. Yeah, of course. It's been he's about five times world. though. It's been like five times though this year. He's got no. So I mean, like, when they gonna kill him? I don't think I don't think that's it. I I, I just I don't think that he has it. It's, I don't think he's 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 holding any secrets. I'm sure he knows shit, but I don't yeah. think he, I don't think that's why they're getting him up. He's Wisconsin's most he, he's a, he's a, he's got to be hit man. Wanted is set to go free again thanks to the generosity of a convicted drug trafficker. Fox 6 investigator Brian Paulson shows you the 51-year-old business owner who put up more than $100,000 cash to spring a 25-year-old homicide defendant from jail. Kenneth Twyman has been picked up by U.S. Marshals three times. He's posted bail three times. His homicide trial is still four months away, but in six days, he's scheduled to get out of jail again. That Kenny Twyman is a dangerous, dangerous individual. For even the most violent accused criminals in Wisconsin, the key to freedom is cash. It is nothing for a drug dealer. So when one of Wisconsin's most wanted needed a quick hundred grand. Richard Stulo, how you doing? His family went looking 
for this man. How are you? All right, all right. I'm just trying to find out a little bit more about why you posted a hundred thousand dollars bail for Kenny no Twyman. To you guys, man. How do, how do you know here. Kenny Twyman? Get out of here. It doesn't matter. Cool. Richard Stulo owns Colt Construction. Stop trying to take pictures, boy. He is also a drug dealer, convicted of using this house near 29th and Cleveland as home base for dealing marijuana. I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to talk to him. Talking to the wrong person, boy. When police raided the house in 2018, they found nine guns, more than three pounds of weed, and $101,000 in cash. If they had $100,000 in cash. Just laying around. That means they caught, he, he, he's lucky they caught him after he had sold out. Because if they had caught him right, right when he read up, he would have had way more than three pounds. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? They caught him after, like, they had already, I guess, he was sold out or done the drop or dropped off the, um, you know what I'm saying, the money. Because they don't keep, the, you don't shit where you eat. He probably, they, you don't usually keep all your money where you eat. So that's probably just a portion of the money. But yeah, this guy doing a nice little got a nice little business, man. I, I remember these days, man. Um, these these the good old days, man. I, I kind of got affinity for this guy, man. Weed dealers. I I, I kind of you know I got I got I got kind of got a soft spot in my heart for weed dealers, man. Got Kenny no Twyman, to you guys, man. How do Get how do you know here. Kenny Twyman? Get out of here. It doesn't matter. Call. Richard Stulo owns Colt Construction. Stop trying to take pictures, boy. He is also a drug dealer, convicted of using this house near 29th and Cleveland as home base for dealing marijuana. I'm not here to talk to you, I'm here to talk to him. Talking to the wrong person, boy. When police raided the house in 2018, they found nine guns, more than three pounds of weed, and $101,000 in cash. Four years later, Stulo had another hundred grand available to help 25-year-old Kenneth Twyman. I just oh, asked why, what's your connection to wait, Kenny wait, wait, Twyman? Do I have to hire an attorney go after you? Can you please leave? It's drugs. Absolutely drugs. It has to be drugs. U.S. Marshals are asking for your help locating this 19-year-old Milwaukee man. Twyman is a three-time fugitive picked up by U.S. Marshals in Milwaukee, Oak Creek, and Little Rock, Arkansas. He doesn't just flee and not come back to court. He flees the jurisdiction. He flees the state of Wisconsin. In 2018, Milwaukee County prosecutors charged him with leading police on a high-speed chase, causing a crash that hurt three people leaving behind a rolling drug house with seven cell phones. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean, just think about the shit he does, man. He's a menace to society, man. It's not just shooting people and killing people. It's driving recklessly and injuring people with, with a rolling drug house. They call this car a rolling drug house. This is this is an, an, an unbelievable. Man. State of Wisconsin. In 2018, Milwaukee County prosecutors charged him with leading police on a high-speed chase, causing a crash that hurt three people, and leaving behind a rolling drug house with seven cell phones, including one that contained this video. A complete menace of the city. In early 2019, U.S. Marshals tracked him down. Tonight. That suspect is in police custody. But Twyman soon posted three thousand dollars cash bail and disappeared. That was some light shit. Three thousand. So they started off playing with him. This is this this is this is. Have, and here's the thing. Every son man we see on this show that we cover on this show, their journey through the criminal justice system is filled with nothing but breaks. Nothing but um, short sentences. Um, it's, a, it's a cakewalk through the criminal justice system. We deal all of them, even the ones who find like like Daryl Brooks, who now he's finally getting what seven hundred years. Look at his track record. They've been playing with Daryl Brooks for fucking twenty years. They've been playing fucking patty cake with him for twenty years. And they finally slammed him because he killed seven people. He posted $3,000 cash bail and disappeared again. It wasn't until January of this year that U.S. Marshals picked him up for a second time. He posted $9,500 bail and got out again. And in April, police say Twyman shook hands with Tavon Luckett outside a gas station convenience store, then shot him twice, killing him. After shaking my grandson, saying how coward this was, 
have never happened because he wouldn't have been out. He shouldn't have been out of jail. Prosecutors charged Twyman with homicide, and in July, U.S. Marshals arrested him for the third time. This time, a Milwaukee County judge set bail at $100,000 and doubled the bail in his other pending cases. With $12,500 already paid, he would need another $112,500 to get out. And within a few weeks, Richard Stulo paid all of it. Who and why is the question. A relative of Tavon Luckett, who asked not to be identified out of fear for her safety, said it's all happening as the criminal justice system watches. I think the Department of Corrections should answer some questions for us. Stulo is still on probation, and it wasn't until after Fox 6 News first reported the bail payment in August that his agent asked him for an explanation. His probation should be revoked. He should be in prison as well. According to probation records obtained by the Fox 6 investigators, Stulo told his agent he doesn't even know Kenneth Twyman. He just knows his parents from church. <laughs> he knows his parents from church. He just trolling <laughs> them now. <laughs> salute to Genetic Freak. He says, salute up. You know I'm here to listen to AP Cook tonight. I'm in SoCal. And for your information, Thousand Oaks is more glidery than Mayberry. There's truly nowhere to hide from the sun now. Oh, now that's not the sun that's getting them a thousand dollars. That's the own. That's the own Britos, man. That ain't us, man. <laughs> we can't take every. We can't take the beef. Everything, goddamn it. That was Ch a Chilean gang in Thousand Oaks, man. But um, salute to you, man. Um, and salute to um James, James R. He says appreciate the knowledge and love, bro, and all who help. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Um. Yeah, this guy's funny as shit. This guy's hysterical. I know his parents from church. According to probation records obtained by the Fox 6 investigators, Stulo told his agent he doesn't even know Kenneth Twyman. He just knows his parents from church. And he's charging Twyman's mother an additional $10,000 to bail her son out. Wisconsin state law prohibits anyone from profiting from a bail payment. It's why we don't have bail bond companies. But the DOC says it does not have any reason to believe Stulo has violated his probation. You want to explain what a convicted drug dealer is doing, bailing out a guy who's wanted for murder? Stulo's loan got Twyman out of the Milwaukee County Jail. But before he could go free, the sheriff's office transferred him to Waukesha to face drug charges there. This is something odd. I have somebody who qualifies for public defender representation, but is literally sitting on $125,000 worth of cash. An assistant DA warned the court Twyman plans to run again. He was on jail calls, figuring out places to go, including California and Las Vegas. So the commissioner set bail at $200,000, but bail only applies while a case is pending. In October, Twyman pleaded guilty to the Waukesha charges and the judge sentenced him to 180 days in jail. But I feel like if he gets out, he's gonna run again and possibly do commit more crimes. And that's why this message- I just cannot believe it. Left Luckett's relatives stunned. Just disheartening and hurtful to this family. Thanks to 94 days served before his sentence and 45 days credit for good behavior, Twyman's <laughs> one- this is this is the racist criminal justice system that we're hearing about. That the brother just can't catch a break, man. I mean, a good brother, because remember, it's not the bad brothers that can't catch a break. It's good brothers that are locked up, innocent. No police just rounding brothers up for no reason. Yeah, just they, just he's in prison for ten years for just having a half ounce of weed. Yeah, no, they, no, not a half ounce, a gram, a gram of weed. Yeah, they can't catch a break. Like the good brothers can't catch a break. This is the worst of the worst. Stunned. Just disheartening and hurtful to this family. Thanks to 94 days served before his sentence and 45 days credit for good behavior, Twyman's 180 day sentence was reduced to about six weeks. Unless something changes, he'll be a free man before Thanksgiving. It's like a slap in the face. Even though his homicide trial in Milwaukee isn't scheduled until March. Any chance he comes back to court if he gets out? No, he's gonna run again. He's gonna escape. If cash bail protects the public. We are afraid for our family. Tavon Luckett's family should have little to fear. It's very scary. Very scary. But when drug dealers pay to set accused killers free. Richie, you have a chance to tell me anything you want. There's a hundred thousand reasons 
to wonder. Some advocates for bail reform in Wisconsin say cash bail should be eliminated and replaced with a risk-based pretrial assessment system. Others say judges just need to set higher bails. Bail reform is sure to be a topic that will come up once again in the next legislative session. Brian Polson. Fox and this is the case they're going to use for bail reform. Mm -hmm. And we all know what they mean by bail reform, right? Yeah. It's just interesting that two years and three years ago, no one ever even talked about these issues. You're a criminal, you went to jail, you got a bill. Now it's almost as if in two, in three years, it's ridiculous. The notion of setting, giving someone bail is like ridiculous. It's, 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 it's seen as like some draconian, um, barbaric, um, heavy-handed, punitive way of dealing with criminals. Well, this is all we did up until three years ago. And and keep in about. mind, this guy's a murderer. This guy's a murderer. Yeah. Think about what. So think about what they think about a person who's carjacked or robbed. That means that person bailed probably what five thousand dollars, ten thousand, if that much. Yeah. They act like prison. Prison itself is some type of like evil thing. Like where the fact that a prison exists is the problem. Yeah. Well, where's the federal charge for the machine gun? I mean, because he ain't well, getting federal bail. This shit is this shit is insane, man. And they're all over the place. I'm telling you, they're all over the place. And, and this, violent, you know, he's, 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 he's headed south of the border this time. Yeah, I mean, if he gets out, he's going to be like Kaiser Soze. A violent three-day crime spree that spanned from Metro Atlanta to parts of Alabama. This man, Michael Butler, is back in jail facing charges in connection to rapes, shootings, and murder. Police say it started <laughs> in jail facing And he'll be let out on a thousand dollar bond. Shootings and murder. Police say it started last Thursday and ended Saturday. Butler is accused of kidnapping two teenagers outside of Walgreens and raping them in Prattville, Alabama. Last Friday, Butler showed up in Coweta County where the sheriff's office says he kidnapped the couple and then pistol whipped the man. Chattahoochee Hills police say Butler continued his crime spree off Hutchinson Ferry Road. They say he shot a man in the chest and leg. The victim survived. Then police say Butler went back to Alabama where the sheriff tied him to the rape and killing of a woman last Saturday. Butler was arrested after a chase, but get this, all of this happened while the convicted felon was out on mandatory release. He is expected to be extradited to face. Think about all those people's lives that he just affected while he was supposed to be in prison. Under normal, three years ago, he would have been in prison. Or not in prison, he'd have been in jail. He'd have been in jail three years ago, just waiting his trial. And he got out and he affected, he raped two teenagers, raped and killed a woman, kidnapped another couple, pistol with the man, shot somebody else all in like a few days yeah this is what i meant when the these protesters don't understand that they're unleashing the sun man like this is this is this is sun man at his full power level yeah this is this is terrifying man um jesus christ jesus christ this is this is terrifying um and, and, that, these, and these states voted for this stuff again, once again. You run into this guy, and then it's like you just, like, you, he's... And then that, that woman's arguing to get him out. She's trying to make it so that you can't hold him accountable at all. And he's the victim. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's really, really, really troubling, man. Um,